Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting on April 8th, 2019. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a couple of moments of silences. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have several uh, moments of silence, or a couple actually. Um, the first one is for Richard McCarthy, who recently passed away. Mr. McCarthy is a retired teacher and served for many years in the Abington School System. In addition to his professional profession as a teacher and dedication to children in Abington, he was known for his passionate reading and running and an avid Notre Dame football fan. The board wished to express our condolences to his loving wife, Mary, to whom he was married for 59 years, and to his loving family. Mr. McCarthy, we've been missed by his family and all of those in Abington who remember him fondly for the services of the Abington Public School Systems. Can have a moment of silence, please? Thank you. Uh, I'd also like to pause for a moment of silence for Miss Lucy DeYoung, who passed away in February. DeYoung was a much admired teacher of history and social studies at Abington High School from 69 to 94. During her 25 year career as an educator, she earned her reputation as a teacher who prepared her students very well for the rigors of life beyond high school and who firmly believed in the old saying that those who do not learn from their history is doomed to repeat it. DeYoung is remembered finally for her painting of the year 1066, reminding her students that de democracy did not begin with the American Revolution, but rather it parted with the students of historical milestones of the 1066 Battle of Hastings by William the Conqueror, laying the groundworks for the Magna Carta in 1215. DeYoung always cared and, was, and followed the successes of her former students and leaves as she leaves in the lasting legacy in the form of annual scholarships to both Rockland High School and Abington High School to help future students learn from history and become responsible active citizens to our communities. So if you have a moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. Mr. Chin, I had Mr. McCarthy as a teacher. He was a great, great teacher. He'll be missed. Well, obviously, he did a good job with me, so. <laughs> God bless all educators. <laughs> uh, public announcements, please. Uh, J uh, Jim? Sure. Friends of the Library, in an effort to make the Friends of the Library annual book sale more user-friendly, we will only be accepting the following types of books for the 2019 sale. Fiction, hardcover and paperbacks, nonfiction, history, sports, autobiographies, biographies, cookbooks, gardening books, children's books and young adult fiction, puzzles and DVDs. Collection dates will be from April 8th to April 23rd. We appreciate these books being in good, clean condition. We will no longer be able to accept encyclopedias, dictionaries, coffee table books, how-to books, inspirational books, crafting books, etc. We hope to offer our patrons a wonderful selection. The Friends of the Library annual book sale will take place Friday, April 26th from 12.30 to 4.30 p.m. and Saturday, April 27th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Is that it, Jim? That's it. Thank you. Tim? Abington Public Library will be holding Family Story Hour, Saturday, April 6th, Saturday, April 20th, and Saturday, April 27th. Join us for some stories, songs, and silliness in the children's room at 1030. No need to register. Just drop by and join the fun. Thank you. Ken? Uh, Saturday, June 8th is uh, Abington Celebrates Weekend, and that is the day of our fireworks that we brought back last year. Um, this year, um, there, again, just as last year, there'll be a 5K road race. However, this year it's going to begin at the field and end at the field with a fireworks out of trying to tie it all in. So um, you can go on, was it racewire, I think, dot com to register for that. Um, and also, the night of the, uh, the night of the fireworks, we are an Abington business, youth group, civic group, church group, sports group, or local nonprofit. We would like to hear from you to see if you would like to set up on the field to provide activities for children or to raise funds for your group by selling refreshments, food items, or other items at this family friendly community event. So if you're interested, we have a lot of people already lined up uh, to, uh, to do activities and sell food there. But if you're interested, you can actually contact me and, um, or anybody else on the Abington Celebrates Committee. Um, uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Tom? All right, I have something from the Abington Music Parents. 
the 20th annual duck race. The raffle tickets are available. The race is Saturday, May 4th, 2019 at 1 p.m. at the Beaver Book, Bre Beaver Brook Playground, so Ralph Hanlon Lane. Yeah, well, ducks can be purchased, not ducks, the raffle tickets can be purchased at Edmonton Bank April 6th through the 20th and at the Edmonton Town Elections April 27th. First prize, first place is $300, second is $150, third is $75, fourth is $50, fifth is $25. It is $5 a duck, $5 a duck raffle ticket. I've already bought mine, so hopefully everybody will get out and get this. I wasn't that <laughs> it wasn't that straight, I don't think. But <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Uh, before we go into uh, public appointments and our other things, are there any public comments tonight from anyone in the audience? Seeing none, I'd like to go into the uh, first one at 635. Paul Moniker, Chairman for the Community Preservation Act, will present the fiscal 2020 recommendations. Paul, come on up, please. Oh, no notes. Look at this. Wow. He sat him up in the. Oh, okay. <laughs> very good. He's very good. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, wait. Try to see which one he's looking at. Change the glasses, you see. Oh, we can it's got, a, it's got an overhead video. <laughs> This is tough with the, uh, with the I think, yeah, so uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I'd like to give you a little bit of background on uh, the uh, Community Preservation Act, uh, you know, the, the, the process procedures and what the warrant articles, what we've done historically for the past couple of years and also what's on the warrant for, for this year. The um, Community, Preserva Community Preservation Act uh, was signed into law by Governor Paul Cellucci and Lieutenant Governor Jane uh, Swift in uh, September of 2000. Uh, and, uh, and the accomplishments to date include 175 communities have adopted uh, CPA. Um, of the total number of adopted communities, 30s are cities and 145 are, are, are towns. 60% of the state population live in a CPA community. Just over 2.1 billion has been raised to date for community preservation funding statewide. Almost 11,000 projects have been approved by local legislative bodies, um, uh, and um, um, 20, almost 30,000 acres of open space have been presented, or preser preserved. Over 51 appropriate, 5,100 appro appropriations have been made for historic preservation products, uh, projects, and over 2,200 outdoor recreation pro projects have been initiated. Um, so it's been an extremely successful program. Uh, there is a bill pending in the legislature this year to expand the revenue source uh, for, for the state funding. Um, Senator uh, John Keenan, um, uh, I, uh, we had correspondence back and forth. I invited him to uh, come to the town uh, and I could show him around. And so he came last Friday um, at uh, Rick's uh, invitation. And I showed them all the stuff that we've done to date, uh, as well as um, uh, what the bills are pending. Uh, he's very supportive of the uh, legislation and also of, of, of CPA uh, in, in general. Um, Will that legislation guarantee a certain percentage? It's, it's looking to increase it. So uh, what's, what's happened, uh, good, good, good question, what's happened um, over the first years, the, the, the match might have been um, like 50 percent and now there's so many towns in it uh, with a surcharge under um, like uh, three percent the the uh, reimbursement for the the, uh, the end of 2019 is about 11.5 percent so that's like around 40 maybe 42 forty five thousand dollars for Abington um, so um, uh, so one of the issues uh, one of the bills pending a year ago was to increase the revenue source so that funding could be a bigger part to be disp uh, dispersed by uh, over the 145 uh, cities and towns that are in it. So, um, so he's very supportive of that. And I think with so many cities and towns now in it, it has uh, a lot of support to uh, hopefully to pass. Um, so uh, good question. The um, Jack Buckley uh, um, got approved at town meeting a couple of years ago, the uh, uh, CPA uh, surcharge for Abington. I think after a second second attempt, um, and the town approved a one and a half percent surcharge on on, on tax bills, and um, the uh, the CPA committee consists of uh, nine people, uh, five are representatives from the from the standing committees, 
Four of the uh, nine uh, uh, people are, are appointed by the uh, uh, selectmen from the uh, population at large. Um, and the uh, um, sp specific uh, uses of CPA money include open space, uh, conservation, historic preservation, outdoor recreation, housing, uh, etc. Uh, and um, the, the terms of the nine people are staggered over one to three years, so there's a good continuity of, of, of people. Uh, we have a very good uh, committee, um, and the um, um, committee at, at this point consists of uh, Jeff Rangel from Planning, Rory Manning from Park and Rec, Susan Weaver is appointed by the Selectmen, Kathy Creeton from Conservation, Melody Olson from Housing, uh, Ahmet Lodge, uh, uh, Catherine Shaw from Historical, Steve Wakelin at Lodge, and, uh, and of the total committee, the only one that has any real value is our administrative assistant, who is Kelly Johnson, sitting there. So all of us could go home, uh, and if Kelly stayed, the thing could function and function well, uh, et cetera. So, uh, you know, it, it's good to recognize uh, uh, people for what they do and their contributions. So Kelly does a great job for us. Um, I, I, you know, I think in um, um, some of the requirements of, uh, of Abington CPA or any CPA is that we hold at least one public hearing a year. So I think one of the values of this meeting is hopefully so many people in town see it. We, we're trying to get the message out. If anybody has a good idea uh, that, that meets the eligibility requirements to come to our CPA uh, meetings and, and, and we'll go over what they have, make sure they're eligible, and, and, and see if we can get it, get it going. So the requirements are to hold a, uh, at least one public hearing a year, uh, update our community preservation plan yearly, review the uh, account balances that we have, the spending to make sure it's in compliance with the, uh, the Act's allowable uses, uh, prepare the CPA budget for town meeting, and uh, make recommendations to the, to, to, uh, to the town committee uh, or the town meeting. Uh, any questions we have in terms of eligibility, we refer it to the uh, state CPA uh, commission who have been excellent for us. Um, the CPA funding has certain set-asides we can approve up to. 5% for administration, and the administration would include like uh, public hearings that we have to have, uh, announcements in the paper, any advertising uh, that we do, those types of things. Whatever we don't use in terms of appropriation of, 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 uh, of administration goes back into our general fund. So uh, that's what we do. 10%, minimum 10% has to go into housing, a minimum 10% for open space and recreation, a minimum of 10% of our yearly budget has to go into historic. <coughs> And, uh, we, and we put the other 65% into a flexible account. Um, and um, you know, we've, um, the, the um, uh, housing budget is starting to accumulate, and, and I think um, uh, it's like 140,000 um, right now. And um, you know, uh, some cities and towns have used that. Uh, I think Situate might have uh, done it on, on Norwell, and um, uh, they used a, a, a piece of town property that the town owned. Uh, they put their, uh, their money in, they partnered with a, a private developer, and a certain percentage of that, uh, that, that project was affordable housing for, for, for people in the town. So, you know, that's something that uh, maybe Abington should consider for one of the old schools that we have. Uh, we own the land, we own the building, we have money to put into it and, uh, and uh, stuff. So I think one of the things we're looking at for next year is to uh, maybe engage a consultant uh, to do a feasibility study for us to see how that might work, um, uh, et cetera. So, um, you know, I think, um, uh, let's see, um, the, um, some of the basic um, tenets of CPA spending, uh, uh, no money can be used to support the uh, general municipal revenue, uh, no maintenance or operating expenses, uh, no money can be used. Uh, the recreation is only for outdoor out, outdoor projects. Um, any asset purchases must uh, we must file a permanent restriction with the state. We have to make sure it's eligible. Historic has to follow the the flow chart for projects. Um, uh, projects may not be voted on at town meeting unless CPA has approved uh, has approved the projects. Uh, the selectmen of the finance committee um, are not in the approval uh, process. We look for your support, we look for the finance committee's support, but the town CPA and, the, and actually the town meeting is the one who approves the, uh, uh, the projects. Um, and um, uh, local boards can approve for funding and stuff like that. So um, what I thought I'd do would be to pass this out and give you an idea of what we've done to date. Uh, and um, 
what um, uh, what's on the warrant for this year. Thank you. The first, the first page is like who's on the committee, their their uh, um, um, their um, email and telephone numbers uh, uh, sitting in the um, uh, in the uh, seats. Steve Wakelin is on the committee, and Rory Manning uh, is also here from uh, uh, Community Preservation. If you turn to page one, uh, turn uh, uh, page one is what what was approved uh, in the 2018 uh, projects that were approved in, in the 2018 town meeting. Um, we approved uh, 18,000 for community preservation expenses that ultimately went back into the fund. Um, um, we spent uh, 33,000 to re to update uh, playground equipment at Arnold Park and Laidlaw Field. Uh, which included equi equipment, um, fencing, wood fiber, um, Griffin's Dairy. Uh, we approved 75,000 for uh, for fencing, trails, bridge, sign, gravel. Um, you know, just um, historic. Um, 22,000 for the American Legion building uh, repairs to the to the to the uh, the exterior of the building, um, um, and also we approved 35,000 for an engineering study for Island Grove. Um, and once the money's been, and, and 36,000 went into the, the uh, community housing uh, fund. So that's just in our, in our, in our funding. So uh, anything that's been approved uh, that hasn't, that money, the project hasn't been completed, stays approved. It uh, doesn't have to be reapproved every year uh, until somebody comes back and says, uh, you know, we're not gonna do it. Um, so whoever, the, whoever sponsors the uh, uh, the request, uh, if they just, if they change their mind at some point, then that money gets gets uh, we cancel it out and it goes back into into our, into our general fund. Uh, on page two is the uh, the what we approved a year ago for in the fiscal year 2019. Again, we approved five percent for um, um, expenses, and again, whatever we didn't use, we didn't use a lot, but uh, we might have used five to seven thousand bucks, um, and. Um, the rest of it went back into the general fund. We approved 75,000 for Griffin's uh, Deary, walking, path, walking paths, bridges, uh, fields, um, and, uh, and then we also approved uh, $9,800 for surveying and gravel, um, uh, DPW fencing, uh, replacement fencing for various town fields and parks, 53,000, rally track, uh, 240,000 to resurface that, Summer constants, 39,000 for new lighting. Uh, summer constants, improvements to bridge and entrance, 30,000. Uh, that 39,000 for lighting and 30,000 um, for bridge and uh, to, to improve the bridge and entrance, that money hasn't been spent yet. And on the town warrant for this year is additional money to, uh, to do that. So those are estimates. Um, there was never, uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but that money has is, is, is been approved but hasn't been funded yet. Um, the American Legion building, we approved 21,000 for continuation of the exterior, and um, another 36,000 went into uh, community housing, and um, uh, 15,000 went into uh, into uh, historical um, um, reserves. Uh, what's proposed for this year is on on page three um, is um, um, five percent of 20,000 for for expenses, again, whatever we don't use, most of that goes back. Uh, Griffin's Dairy, another 38,000 for walking paths, bridges. Um, you know, if you haven't, uh, I, I don't know, if you, hopefully you've been down to Griffin's Dairy, uh, but they've done the, the mm -hmm. Griffin's Dairy committee uh, group has done like an unbelievable amount of work down there. You know, the average age of that group is like 85, and the, and the, and the, and the people work like dogs. Uh, and it's and if uh, we go down every year because we 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 sponsor the stuff, uh, or we, you know we uh, part of our role is to make sure the money is spent properly and all that kind of stuff. But they've done a great job, and and there's a, they'll be probably coming back every year 
for the for the next X number of years until I, until it's, it's finished. But they've done a great job, and 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 you know our, our appreciation to them for all the work that they've done. Um, we we um, um, last year we approved um, uh, lights for pickleball. Um, the pickleball courts are behind the uh, the um, senior um, um, senior, center. senior center. Thank you. And um, um, the three pickleball courts that are there uh, were funded with private donations and in-kind in donations. So the Pickleball Association spent about 40 grand of their own money uh, through donations and all that stuff to put three pickleball courts in. Last year we approved lights for 38,000 to light those courts. And, and the lights are probably about, uh, you know, probably 30% um, finished. Um, and probably within the next 30 days, uh, the, the, those will be lit. Uh, this proposal is to add uh, three additional courts. Uh, you know, if, if anybody here play pickleball? Pickleball is like uh, is is great for uh, people as you get older, because it's like a tennis court, but it's smaller, um, and um, and they use like a like a uh, a wiffle ball size softball, um, and and the ball doesn't move a lot. Uh, so if you move more than one step either way, you've probably missed the ball. So you can, you can play pickleball when you're 80 or 90 years old, and as long as you can move your arms and swing, so it's extremely popular, and it's a, a great way for, for uh, you know, uh, people as you get a little bit older to exercise and, and have all that kind of stuff. So we're looking, uh, with the CPA committee has approved that. Um, We've also uh, uh, approved the um, uh, library story garden uh, uh, um, restoration of, of that uh, for 12,000. Um, we've approved uh, uh, 7,400 for the for the Turin Table Park, uh, which which is part of the walking trail, the old rail, railroad turntable. It's it's a historic site. Um, if you remember back um, in the old days. Um, um, when the train, the locomotive got to the end of the line, it would go on a turntable and it'd literally turn the, put the thing on the thing and turn it around so it'd go the other way. Uh, so looking to, to do that. Uh, Island Grove uh, Pond Study. Um, um, let's see, that's, that, this, is, this is kind of backwards. Um, it, uh, no, it isn't. Let's see, Island Grove, Island Grove Pond Study. Turn. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the, uh, this, this study is to, uh, uh, to determine the quality of the water and also the invasive plants for Island Grove. So if you go down to the, the water and you look at the edges, and there's all kinds of stuff growing. Um, so some concerned um, um, uh, group uh, would like to get that, um, the, the, um, that study done to determine what needs to be done to, uh, you know, to preserve the, the, the pond and the quality of the, of the water there. Uh, we've also uh, looking to um, Approved 78,000 for the improvements to the entrance of the bridge. So, so last year we approved 30, 39,000 for lighting and 30,000 to uh, 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 improve the entrance to uh, to there. This 78,000 is is the money needed actually to complete that. So, if you go to the summer concerts, um, there's only a little bit of light, and they're you know extremely uh, popular now. Uh, and it's a little bit of a, a you know a safety is a safety issue uh, to extend the lighting up to the up to the uh, the snack uh, uh, shop there, and also improve bed getting in and out, <coughs> et cetera. So we're looking to do that under historic resources, sixteen thousand to complete the external of the American Legion. Uh, a year ago, they found uh, lead paint on part of it, so the money that we approved. Previous year, we thought was going to be enough, and when they tested, they found lead paint, um, and they didn't have enough to finish it. So this 16,000 uh, com completes the uh, the exterior. Will complete the exterior of the American Legion. We've approved 6,600 for historical markers, the restoration. So if you if you drive around town, there's a bunch of uh, like historical markers um, that have been here forever, uh, and um, and you'll see some that have been restored, and there's a lot that they're in the process of restoring. So you know the difference being what they look like, and after they're restored, looks like night and day. So they really do a uh, uh, do a good job on that, and also um, document uh, preservation 27.5. So we're looking to to um, uh, digitize um, various town records um, uh, to preserve them. Um, so if something happened to the to the records that the town has, they they're gone. 
So by doing this, it preserves it, pre it preserves a lot of documents. Uh, we're looking to uh, uh, approve uh, sixty thousand uh, to complete the uh, additional funds to complete the study of the bridge. That coupled with the thirty-five thousand we approved a couple years ago, uh, Rick has had a detailed uh, bid done from an engineering firm that will um, that will um, uh, do an engineering study. Um, you know, diving into the water to do the, the footings up, et cetera, et cetera, because uh, that bridge is, is, is in uh, major disrepair uh, and uh, it's on historic registers. So we're, we're trying to get an idea of what, what the cost of that might be and, and 40000 for f to put into community housing. So, so that's the, um, um, and then on the back is like the, uh, you know, like the uh, income expense figures and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we anticipate to carry over. 131,000 in, in revenue to uh, f for next year. So, uh, I'll open up to any questions that you might have on the uh, on the projects that um, um, that, uh, that that's up for up for town meeting. Anyone on the board? No, last year, someone from the, the graveyard up. Uh, up yes. Yeah. Somebody did not ask somebody this year. Or? They uh, they came in and um, um, they um, uh, they met with us. So people will come in, and the first thing is they talk about eligibility. Mm -hmm. So before there's an application to fill out, but before we have people uh, fill an application, we have them come and to make sure their project is eligible before they do that. So they pass that, uh, and one of the issues they had was with, <coughs> with respect to the title of the, that cemetery, and and it's 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 a it's 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 a little bit of a it's a it's a uh, a lot of work to research the title because it goes back so far. So they withdrew. They never actually filled the application out. I would think at uh, at, at some point, uh, Ken, they'll be coming back, um, and um, you know, uh, for that. So, and the way it works is, a minimum of ten percent has to be for each of those three categories. Which is not to say that housing could get is stuck at ten percent. It could be, you know, if they come up with a project, housing could get up to seventy percent. Right. Yep. Yep. So, um, and, and before I finish, I'd just like to say a couple of things. I'd like to uh, thank the committee for all the, it's been, been a lot of work. Um, and also, I'd like to thank uh, Jack Buckley, who was the, the one who uh, really persevered and, um, and, and got this thing approved for the town. Uh, you know, Dory and, and, and Rick have been um, uh, huge helps, as well as uh, Sue Mokum. Um, and, uh, and special thanks to uh, John Stone. So all the stuff we've done in terms of the parks, the fencing, uh, all that material, uh, we've just paid for the material, and John Stone and the DPW have actually done the work. So, so if, you, if, you, if you take those numbers and multiply them by at least you know, one or two times, um, you know, that's probably what, uh, what the value of those, those things are. So special thanks to him for all his help and, and, and also to the committees who have come come, you know, Griffin's Dairy and Legion and everyone else who has an interest in the town because we've made some significant, uh, uh, the town, is, town committee has approved some significant improvements for projects that otherwise would never get done. Riley Field, I don't know if you've seen it, but, uh, but uh, that the new track looks better than the old track. Um, and that was a cost of 240000 which was a lot of money. But the, I think the, the, uh, the warranty on it is either 10 or 15 or 20 years or something like that. Uh, and uh, a lot of people use that, you know, um, so a lot of people go down to uh, Griffin. So, you know, if you haven't, like, uh, if you haven't gone down to see these things, it might be, it, it's good to see, like, if, um, the before and after. So take a walk over to the, uh, um, the, um, uh, the bandstand and over there and see what it looks like now and what it looks like afterwards. So, uh, so anyways, any other, any other questions? Oh, the pickle court, gonna, it, more lights, I mean, am I assuming they're putting three more courts in or do they have enough lighting or will, will um, they need lighting? For good, good question, Tom. I think the, uh, the, the, uh, the lights that are going in is like, uh, there's, 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 it consists of four, um, uh, two on each end uh, and the one on the end with the addition uh, um, will lit the, the three new ones. But they might need two more on the far end, so they they could come back. But the 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 um, um, the trenching um, is done, so that the if they need, they need to come back for the lights for the for those, the uh, for the far end of the additional three, that would be cheaper than um, what they've done because they don't have to trench from the uh, the um, 
the senior center to the to the to the field there. Can uh, residents get an application online? Um, the best what we su what we suggest is is uh, you know we start reviewing applications um, in like the fall. So you know um, come anyone's interested, come to the committee meetings to go over what you're looking to what they're looking to do to make sure it's eligible. We'll give you some help. We, we assign one of the members as kind of the liaison to help uh, help the, the the group or the individual whoever it might be complete the application to make it a little bit easier. You know, we've learned a lot in the uh, in the three years that uh, we've had it, uh, and and uh, so our our our, um, our role is to is to uh, you know look to approve all, everything that's eligible, but also give people help relative to the process, what they need to do, et cetera. So it it makes it easier uh, because again we've learned a lot uh, in the uh, in the three years that we've uh, we've been doing it. So, and the people on the committee, you know, we have a couple engineers. We got. Uh, a lot of people with like with technical uh, experience uh, that have been in town, uh, people in the various conservation planning, et cetera, et cetera. Those people have been uh, can offer a lot of experience, a lot of help to anyone. So that's what we look like. So anybody who wants to come, come. Um, so I just have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, we have the advantage sitting here. I mean, I know what the turntable park is. I know historical markers, document preservation. Uh, because this has all been brought up before us, but if somebody out there watching on TV, because um, I mean you're not going to have time, but well, you you could if you had to. But at town meeting, you give a presentation on every single thing. How could they find out more about these projects? Is there a way to besides? I mean, is there any information available online or is uh, uh, the projects that we're doing? Yes, Kelly. Yeah. So anyone, anyone who's interested, um, um, uh, you know, Kelly's our, Kelly Johnson's our, our administrative assistant. So anyone who's interested, uh, reach out to one of the members. Yeah, and we'll get get whatever information people need. Are you stepping down as chairman of the? I am. Yes. Yes. This is my. Uh, this I've been. This is my third year, and, and uh, we got some great people here. So. Uh, um, I just want to thank you for the lead you took and the effort you've put in over the last three years doing this this role and I appreciate it and what you've done for the town so thank you very much for well, stepping well thank you but but you know it's Kelly <laughs> well um where are you rank in pickleball I don't play Tom oh okay <laughs> not old enough Just you have an even chance now. I don't play there you go <laughs> <laughs> could be hazardous to my health no, no thank you again Paul so anyways well thanks and we look for your support Thank you very much. Um, I think we have a public hearing we have to uh, yes. open. For every Valley Golf Course, correct. So at 6.45, we had a public hearing request for the common particular beer and wine license at Strawberry Valley Golf Course at 164 Washington Street. Um, all in favor? Is this an individual or is it a group? All in favor? Uh, I'll take a motion to open the meeting. I'll make that motion. Tom makes second. the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Jim seconds. Said anything further said not. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. It's been by zero. Um, who's representing Strawberry Valley Golf Course tonight? I think. No. No, actually, I, I, I didn't know I was on the agenda. Oh. So. Renee's not here. That's fine. Well, some of you are aware the Com Golf had a beer and wine license there. Um, They're no longer in business. The current uh, Strawberry Valley uh, Committee is looking to have a beer and wine license. The, uh, as you can see, the paperwork is in order. Um, the manager will be um, Rennie Ballin, Ballin Court. Um We're still trying to get the name down. And the, uh, the location and the application has been reviewed by our public safety officials and building department. Um, Public hearing notices were in order, um, the posting and the certified abutters notices. Uh, and soon as presuming this is approved, then we'll get the insurance information um, binder together. And Any questions from the board? Yeah. yeah. Ken? Um, this is just bear and wine, correct? Correct. Yeah. And the town has licenses available, or is there no limit anymore on licenses? No, we do have we have one available. Yes, okay. it's the same one that has been up there, Com Golf. Now I know at one point, um, 
I believe that they used to uh, used to be able to procure alcohol up there after golfing, so I don't think this is yeah. a stretch. My question is, hours of operation, I don't see that <clears throat> listed anywhere. Do they, are they the same hour? Uh, they are uh, they're uh, the same as the pre previous, uh, as Tom Golf, but. Um, right, but is the golf course open certain nine hours? 9 p.m. Um, on, sorry, but that's, uh, I know the, the, the exact same uh, hours that, uh, of Com Golf. I'm trying to find that. And this is seasonal, correct? Uh, yes, it is. Let me. If I wanted to go get a beer while I was the kids were snow, you know, tobogganing. No, I couldn't no, do that. You couldn't, you couldn't do that. Yeah. Uh, Thought that was a win-win. No, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the hours of operation would be what? Did you say they were? Yeah, I know. Uh, Steve, you know exactly what the uh, hours well, would be? I know they are. Golf wise, it's 6 a.m. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what the I'm trying to find it exactly here. Yeah. Mean time uh, to close it. When we close it, the sun goes down. Yeah. I think to cover up our yeah, butts, we might want to put a time on on that. I mean, everybody else in town is required to have yeah, time I mean, uh, to stick to the times. Will there be food available too? Or is it just alcohol? There's there's uh, there's food up there, but it's there's food. Limited light food. Right. Yes. Okay. You're not gonna you're not gonna have a steak dinner. No. Can have that at the case. Bring it on, right? Wait so. yeah. What's steak dinner at the case? Yeah, afterwards. Oh. I mean, we can make a vote, con a vote contingent upon sure. you know, yeah. filling in the hours later if that's agreeable to the board. Yeah. Yeah, apologies on that. I thought that was. Where, Rick, we're, we're going to be in charge of the golf course now, or? Yeah. Uh, yes. I mean, through, the, through the committee, the town will be owning and operating. Will that sort of change the liability, or? Well, we will have uh, appropriate insurance, uh, which is paid for through the enterprise fund of the, of the golf course. So it will be a binder on, uh, in addition to the town's uh, liability insurance, once again, paid for through the enterprise fund. Now just, I just want to make uh, clarify, too, my vote is going to be contingent that, that the, it is not named the 19th hole. I just want to let me that. I'm sorry? Yeah. So it would be called the, the 10th hole. <laughs> the 10th hole. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Really, is that a contingency? <laughs> Dude. So, other than contingent of uh, operation hours, which we need to have, we all agree, need to have something concrete in. Uh, is there any other contingencies the board wants or has, has a recommendation? No, I, I will note that there is a, a TIPS training certificate that at least one of the members there, I think it's supposed to be someone with tips training there at all times at all times so i'm not sure if this um, so yeah, anyone that serves would have to be tip right yeah, so. you would have to be over 21. yeah i would make a motion to uh to approve the beer uh, wine and malt beverage license on premise license for the uh, strawberry valley golf course um with the hours to be filled in by the town manager. Should I ask anyone in the public before we do the vote? Right, before you vote, yes. Right? Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm learning. Okay. <laughs> Is there anyone in, uh, in the audience who has any comment or concerns with Strawberry Valley and the golf course? Should we close the meeting? I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Motion to close the meeting is... Public hearing. Oh, Here. Do we have a second? I second it. Tim seconds it. Joe, Jim, Joe second. Jim seconds it. Any further conditions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. We have a motion to approve the Strawberry Valley common particular beer and white license only pending the hours of operation being set. I'll take a motion. I'll second that. Ken already made the motion, right? Motion yep. and second. I'll second that. Anything further to be said on that? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It's unanimous. Good luck. I'm going to have to take out golf. Um, Next on our agenda is the vote to approve regulations granting HCVE access for Birch and uh, Brighton Streets. This has to do with uh, heavy equipment? Mr. Yes, this is a uh, heavy, heavy commercial vehicle um, exclusion 
for both Birch and Brighton Streets. Initially, we were seeking to, uh, there was a request uh, for Birch Street, but the Old County Planning Council recommended that if you're going to do one, it doesn't make sense not to do the other at the same time, uh, rather than just pushing traffic into an, uh, creating another problems elsewhere. So the, um, the study was conducted, both the streets uh, were within uh, the, the limits <laughs> or the uh, requirements of Mass DOT. And the only thing left to do is, if, if the board so wishes, is to approve um, a regulation granting status to Birch and Brighton Streets. And I have a, 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 a paperwork for you to sign if you so choose to do so. Um, anything from the board? If not, I'll take a motion. I'll make the motion. It yeah, makes a motion to approve the regulation granting HCVE status for both Birch and Brighton Street. So I have a second on that? Yeah, I second. Jim seconds. Is there any further be said on that conversation? If not, I'll take a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. 5 0. That piece of paper, Mr. Thomas? Yeah, I have everything to sign right in here for, for, all, for everything you're going to hopefully okay. approve tonight. Yes. Thank you very much. Next is the, a vote to approve the Little League opening day uh, parade on Saturday, April tw 27th, 2019. That happens to be election day also, correct? Yes, it does. It's a busy day in town. <laughs> it's a busy day in town. Yeah, clean up. Clean up at, uh, stage, the clean up at the uh, state park. I will make a motion to approve the parade permit for Saturday, April 27th, 10, 11 a.m. Starting at the Edmund Police Station parking lot and proceeding up Plymouth Street to Plymouth Street Field. That makes a motion to approve the Little League. So I have a second, please. Second. Tom seconds that. Is there anything further to be said on that conversation? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous 5 0. Good luck with the Little League this year. Approval of the March 25th open session minutes. I'll take a nomination upon your successful. Going back to the HVAC, uh, HVAC, the, the heavy vehicle Sorry. exception, um, does that go into effect immediately? With the regulation has to be, paperwork has to be signed by the board, three originals, then we send it back into uh, the state. Once they get that, notify, confirm us, confirm for us that they receive those, then we can uh, post the signs. So a couple weeks? Yes, yes, I wouldn't think even that long. But okay, yeah. thank you. You're going to go up and running down with your truck? I'm going to take my truck right down to those roads for the next two weeks and enjoy the ride while I can. I don't pay attention to those signs anyway. Yeah, neither do I. Oops. I don't have the minutes. Okay. Oh, yes. They're in a new format. I like it. Yeah. Trying to keep it simple for me. I will make a motion to approve the minutes of Monday, March 25th, 2019. As written. We have a motion to, to approve the Monday minutes. Do I have a second on that? I'll second it. Tom seconds it. Is there anything further to be said on the motion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Abstaining. Five zero five four zero one. Actually, yes, Ken. Okay, never mind. Next thing on the agenda was the Board of Selectmen Town Manager's Goals and Objectives Review. So we have 20 goals here, and um, 
status to date of, it's with the time manager has been working done to work on some of these in the past and in the future and we're looking to prioritize them do we want to do that now uh, that that's that's completely up to you you can wait to do that at a later time but I think the first thing is to uh, agree I think the last time you discussed it um, I know there were ideas thrown out now it's all put together uh, in one document so if you vote to approve these uh, you can look to prioritize them later if you'd like but just so that uh, we know exactly what the goals and objectives are it looks like everything's pretty much in here does anybody see anything that they wanted to add <laughs> Mine are the top ten. They sure we just stay that way. <laughs> <laughs> if um, it's agreeable to the board, what I'd like to do is maybe if people want to get them back to me and just number them one through five, and I'll do the math and try to figure out what the board thinks is a that sound agreeable to the board. Yeah, so just take each one and just and give it a rating. You got a priority, okay. one through five, so one through five, and obviously don't make everything a number one. But right. <laughs> okay. That's good. That's good. I can do that. Just, uh, just scan it, get it back to me, or just email it to me, and I will, the next meeting, I'll, I'll compile it. You know, our time manager is busy enough. I'll take care of that, and then I'll, I'll re you know, if he gives me the format, I'll actually change it after I do the math, so I'll number one. Number that's fine. So I'll, I'll email you the spreadsheet perfect and if I don't get it by later on tonight I want to email and bug you guys right away so <laughs> I'll go right. right now if you like Ken. everyone okay with that I gotta keep this so I can read it oh, you can I want to forget about it <laughs> we good Ken I'm good if the board's all right with that I yeah I haven't heard anything so I think we'll move on one one being the obviously the most important to you Vote to close the special intertown meeting warrants. Yeah, th this is uh, a, a parlor, I guess, ministerial vote just to um, cut, cut the deadline right now so that no other articles can be submitted. Does not appear to be that many articles, really, I mean, compared to what we've had in the past. Yeah, it's not, it's not too bad. There isn't, there's only, there's not a lot of zoning that takes up. 20 pages each right so. I see some petition articles that well, one of them surprised me the one for the uh, banning of plastic bags that's not by the Board of Health that's a petition article that's a petition article yes and hence we we have to uh, petition have articles we have to accept it as exactly. long as it meets a the criteria as written yes as written. okay and this vote will just be to close the warrant right and then so at some point later on we'll review articles sure as a board and right the f again the first one is to close the warrant so there's no further su uh, submissions accepted and the next one would be for the board to vote to finalize meaning the warrants the, the articles that are on there at a future date would be a time if you choose to review each one and um, if you wish right. to make a recommendation, you, you could do that. But right, so it's not to make recommendations, it's just to say they're... Tonight's okay. just to keep the process going for if proper, I, preparation. Hey, Mr. Chairman, did you have any issues with any of the articles or any concerns? Do you think there's anything missing? Do you think... No, I think uh, the 3% the surcharge on you know, uh, recreational marijuana facilities, that was one we want to make sure we didn't miss. Uh, there's, there's one on there, a um, couple on there that regarding from the treasurer collector, um, one was trying to rescind a, a section of the bylaw that is inconsistent with state statute. Another one is to uh, not recommend, but put it before the board in the town meeting whether they want, you know, want to increase demand fees from twenty to thirty dollars. It's not a financial issue, really. It's just the what fees? Demand, demand fees. Yeah. 20 to and who, who, and who is that? A petition article? Or is that no? It's no. from the treasurer okay. collector. So other than that, it's a pretty pretty standard warrant. Um, uh, I guess on the on the annual though there is uh, something that most people um, 
wouldn't expect to see, but July 1, uh, the state is enforcing um, a provision that's actually been in the law for a, a few years, I'm told, where um, cable access corporations, um, even though they're private corporations, the revenue that they receive from Comcast um, and whatever their systems uh, uh, utilize, now has to go through the town, which again, not sure what, ma what sense that makes, so we have to set up a, a fund uh, for revenue to come into the town and then be distributed to the uh, cable access corporations. So that's something that's on here that may seem uh, strange to people because it's new to all of us too. I guess one other thing I'll, I'll point out specifically is that um, um, there is an article that would al allow for the, the town to take either by purchase or gift or, or eminent domain e the easements necessary up on the, for the North Quincy um, project, um, the roundabout project, North Quincy Street. Oh, okay. yeah. So um, there's one abutter, there's only three abutters. One has already gifted the easement to the town. The other two we haven't quite uh, got to that point yet. So hopefully by town meeting. But the town meeting vote uh, has to be in place before any of that can uh, Rick, one of the, I'm not questioning this, but maybe for the seniors that are certainly concerned about the um, uh, the senior center, and I see that it's on here that there's a hundred thousand for yes. replacement of the roof. Right. I think at some time somebody wanted to do that as almost like a petition article, but it's better. Well, whether it's approved or not, I don't know, but it's better to have it in this in Article Three. Right. For, right. Yeah. With all the other capital. Capital, capital improvements because for the town. Okay, and yeah. I, 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 I'm sorry. In addition to that, one hundred thousand is about thirty-five thousand <laughs> that can also be used from a from a prior grant. So, to if the project does go over one hundred thousand dollars, we we're in pretty good shape with the contingency. Right, and somebody somebody questioned me about that this weekend, and I want to make sure. I don't even know if that person is watching, but any of the people that are concerned about the senior center, mm. um, you know, we are working to. You know, right. get a roof on there, and I think that's really important. So. Right, and I, I know that there was some questions from I think some of the uh, the uh, the members of the council on aging regarding the format. That's right. exactly right. So I I believe that uh, uh, Suzanne uh, has given them comfort that this is the process. This has been the format for many years, and it, it's worked worked quite well. I don't think we've ever in the years I've been here had any questions about you know the uh, the capital plan. Right, and they're on here, and they're on here. Absolutely. And so I think yes. more than anything, that's that's the most important thing. So. Yes. I think the concern was, and you could probably answer this, if it's on the capital plan, it doesn't have to be done. If it's a petition article, it has to be done. No. Well, again, this wouldn't it wasn't submitted as a petition article. No. Right. No, well, I'm, to articles. answer Tom's question, that's why they want it as a petition article and not on the capital plan. Well, a petition article, yeah. though, and not to answer for you, Rick, but a petition article, it has to be on, but it doesn't. That doesn't mean it has to be approved. Right. right. But when we get you know, articles, if it's approved by town meeting, then it has to be correct. done. But the right. capital plan doesn't. Well, what happens is, is we get articles in from different departments uh, that are of capital nature, and we codify that into what is the capital article, so we don't have you know 25 separate articles that are all of a capital nature. We do have some uh, pending issues. Um, that aren't quite, we'll say, at a, you know, the priority where it kind of meets our funding ability, uh, and those those might have to wait. Uh, but to the extent that uh, you know we have a, we get an article for the roof, um, you know, it's it's a request, but we put it into the format of our capital plan. Uh, so they do submit it as an article, but this is how it's formatted for us for several years now. Have I confused you all more? No, no, but okay. I, no, it's, it's okay. basically I what I said. That that was the, That's why they wanted this petition article. It's because they, they don't have faith that it's going to get done as part of the capital plan. But I think yeah. if they put it, it, it would have come out of this, or I'm assuming, Rick, it would have come out of Article 3, right. removed, mm -hmm. and a chance they would have taken it. And, and I, yeah. I felt myself, I believe it's better to be in here. Um, mm. And I did explain that to... to um, Couple of the people that asked me about it actually they asked me about it at the blood drive. So as long as it gets done, every, as long as oh it gets yeah. done, everybody's sure, happy. Yeah. Right. Well, it's, we're happy. hoping that it will get done. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we tend to have no questions on the capital article, <coughs> so I, I don't expect we'll have any this year, and certainly not on that particular. <laughs> <item>. <laughs> not if we know what's good for us.
Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, Article 12 and Article 13. Article 12, I guess they opened up the bids for the dog park, and um, there was one low one, but that was not a, a that was a bid we had to throw out. So right. it might be a little bit of shortfall. So we're just anticipating yeah. it might not be enough money from the grant, and that's so we're going to ask. We for have up on to a special town meeting warrant. We have uh, we're requesting a supplemental appropriation of forty thousand dollars, which should be more than enough. But uh, to but make the Stanton sure Foundation is still going to. Yes. Pony up over $100,000 to pay yes. for the bulk and of the... the information we had to provide today was because we, we have a contract with, you know, with, uh, well, with the contractor, uh, but it's unsigned until after the uh, um, the town meeting at, um, action to approve more money. Okay. So the Stan Foundation, they're aware of it. We've required... This is not uncommon for municipalities is to have to, uh, you know, get a supplemental appropriation or fully fund the project after this after a bid process so it's it's not uncommon well you're not sure you're even going to need that forty thousand. no we're, we're going to we're going to need it but there's it, sh it will be enough though i'm saying it, okay. it's 30 35 000, but it, it'll right. be enough if yeah there won't be any shortfalls yeah. after that um and article 13 my, i guess my question article 13 is um available funds ten thousand dollars professional survey of griffin's dairy property for preparation of playing fields i don't have a problem with the article um did it get in too special Right. Yeah. But it, it is. Is it? Did it get in too late to be part of the capital plan, or would not? Because it, it would fit the criteria for the capital plan, uh, would it not? Sports fields. I'm well, keep in mind we have this on the special. Not capital rating. plan. I'm sorry, CPA. Correct. That's correct. It came in too late for. Uh, okay. This was something we agreed in our recent meetings with right. the Little League is that we move forward with this, and that's why it's on the special town meeting warrant, not the annual, because. You know, presumably we can get, go forward with this in May sure. and June, not have to wait till the end of June. Right. So. But if we had thought about it or, or earlier, it pro probably could have used CPA funds for that. That's, yes. Okay, I yes. just wanted to make sure that was not. <coughs> I'll make a motion to, to close the annual and town meeting warrants. It's special. It's special. It's special and annual and town meeting warrants. Uh, I guess that's it. Effective, uh, we have a effective now. To close the annual and special town meeting warrants. So we have a second. I second that motion. Tom seconds that motion. Anything further to be said before we vote? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Five zero. Yep. Thank you. And the other vote you want, uh, Rick, is. Approve the warrant for posting. Do you need a, another motion for that? Yes, yep. yes. Uh, contingent upon any uh, adjustments by town council, although we pretty much have all of them at this point. Anyway. There, there is actually a typo, though, just to let you know that on the CPA, um, it says 2019, FY 2019, but it's actually FY right. 2020. That was not on, that was on uh, okay. the, uh, Mr. Mollick's paperwork. Yeah. I didn't look at everything, but I, I saw that. Too. So it wasn't my typo. That's the important thing. Right. Okay. So I would make the motion to approve the warrant for posting. Motion to approve the posting. It's been posted by Ken. Do I have a second? I will second that motion also. Second Contingent that. upon? Contingent upon? Any, yeah, any yeah, well, questions. subject to any changes by town so, council. Sorry, yeah. yep. Subject to any changes by town council. Anything further to be said on that? No, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Name is five zero. And uh, if I assume, based upon the prior conversation, that you'd like these warrants at your next meeting for you yeah, to go over each article it, it, it's, it's, there was some conversation about that yes, I, please. Off, you know off the record but it's, it's up to you it's completely yes please. up to you we'd like them for the next meeting oh. we'll review that being said uh, town manager's report please Some of this uh, we've kind of already gone over a little bit, but the, uh, in fact, the uh, Little League fields, I know we talked about it a few minutes ago, the $10,000 for a survey. One of the uh, questions, there was a, a, an informal uh, layout by John Stone that he had put together for people to look at, including the, the, the uh, Little League um, representatives as well as Griffin's Dairy Committee. Um, one of the, you know, you know, the Little League, I don't know exactly how many fields they, they're looking for, but I know that the footprint put together by John Stone, again, this is ju just, you know, a, a rough 
sketch uh, was for up to three fields. Hopefully that's part of what the survey will help determine. Uh, there are limitations in the, uh, the uh, order by DEP. And the other question ultimately becomes too is if there can't be three fields put in where the old, where the uh, multi-use soccer fields were supposed to be, um, what does that do to the rest of the property in terms of wetlands, in terms of other uses? So um, basically that, that could become a policy decision for the Board of Selectmen at some point, but we're a little bit, we're not quite there yet. We'll know a little bit better when the time comes. Uh, the Griffin's Dairy Committee obviously has a concern uh, about uh, perhaps the, you know, the, the multiple uses that have been outlined in the master plan for that site are, are you know, kept um, they're, you know, pure so that you know the open space the recreation the paths the gardens etc um, are also part of what happens up here so that uh, recreation is important but what's the balance so that'll come though that's after the you know survey work is done to uh, try to get a sense of what's possible up there and I don't know if anybody heard about this uh, we had about 20 vehicles Comcast vehicles out in our parking lot in front of the library, town hall library a couple weeks ago which uh, we all thought that there was uh, some significant uh, catastrophe happening um, so if you heard about it we have been able to uh, uh, find out that it was simply a training exercise by Comcast they, they couldn't have been bothered letting us know this so um, so uh, Allison Sullivan, a state rep, was helpful in trying to get to the right people. When was the, this during the like during the business day? Yes, yes. The manhole, right out in the right in front of the town hall, the road right out in front of town hall. They're only draining about a million gallons of water so that they could do confined space entry. And needless to say, the pol the fire chief wasn't happy about that when he found out. So, uh, but it was quite concerning. You come home from you come back from lunch and there's 20 vehicles in your parking lot and. Uh, and we already went over the dog park, so there's no reason to do that. Um, but our budget process is reaching a, uh, a conclusion. Um, we've, uh, the Finance Committee is just about done with their departmental um, interviews. And we have, um, this week, we'll, we will have reached a uh, consensus with our school department uh, on a budget plan for next year that also accommodates, you know, the capital plan, as you see on the warrant. And we'll also be making a recommendation to add uh, several hundred thousand dollars to our stabilization fund this year. So we're, we're winding down at this point. Um, it's a grueling process, as some of you know, have been through it. One other th thing I'd like to point out is that um, I did speak to Senator Keenan's uh, staff this week. And I have a note about it somewhere. Um, and we've been in contact with the uh, with the engineers uh, with the Route 18 project, and at some point in the near future, our goal is to get uh, them in here in front of the Board of Selectmen for a public update. Uh, so I'm not sure what meeting, but they they asked if they could have a, you know three weeks to four weeks notice so that they can plan ahead. So you, you can look forward to that at some point. So, and that's all I have at the moment. Rick, can we get a? A copy of the budget now that they're yes. you're winding down you have some numbers that look like they might be close to being definitive maybe yes um, just well, what your budget is and right. we can get that census budget maybe what people asked for just so we know I'm sure because uh, obviously if, if a member has a concern you know we'd like to get it nip in the bud before it becomes an issue so I'm sorry Ken if, so, if a member has a concern that you know oh, sure. some of the funding might not right. be appropriate we want to mm -hmm. we don't want to throw that at you at the last minute no I mean we've uh, made every effort and we've uh, working with you know John Stone this year was our you know staffing priority and we've been able to address that so that's well, obviously it sounds to me like you met the needs of the school department and you guys have a consensus with them yes that's the, the biggest hurdle usually so that's right. good yeah that's all I have Mr. Chairman that's all you have that's all I have is there anything else from the board any other issues they wanted to bring up or would like to have at the next meeting before we talk about executive session or going into executive session? One more time. Schools. Two surplus schools. What we're going to do with them? Um. Surplus schools are on the next agenda, sir. Yes. Thank you. Anything else for any other member of the board? Not. Uh, if 
I could before that, you may have noticed, and when you go over them, you'll see there is an article on the warrant. I know the board has discussed it prior um, to uh, I'll, uh, uh, the center dispose, school. Of, dispose of the center school and to give the board uh, authority to subdivide as you see fit. So that's on the warrants too. But I know that doesn't answer the, the, the key question, but at least you'll be in a position to deal with whatever you decide. Mm -hmm. And how about how are we doing on the other surplus land? Are, we, are they anything on that? I, I don't have a great update at the moment, but a treasure collector has been working with that. Um, but okay. she she's on her family medical leave at the moment. So all right. Okay. And, Motion to enter into executive session to discuss the strategy with respect to negotiations with non-union personnel, i.e. town manager, pursuant to general laws, section 30A, subsection 21A-2, to conduct negotiations with non-union personnel, i.e. the town manager, pursuant to general laws, chapter 30A, section 21A, section 2, uh, to discuss possible discipline of an employee pursuant to general laws, chapter 30A, sections 21A, section 1, and discuss complaint against the town official Pursuant to general law, section 38, section 21A, section 1. Motion to go into executive session. Jim? Yes. Tim? Yep. And? Yes. Tom? Yes, please. Bob. Yes, please. Your name is 5 0. I'll give you five minutes and then we'll go into executive session. Who seconded that? Up? The uh, motion and second on that, just for my records here. Who seconded it? I never used to worry about this. I'll motion, I'll, I'll approve the second. So. We will not. We will, we will not be returning to regular session from executive session. Thank you very much.